But you do too. I mean, there's no way you can work for three years on a project yeah. and not absolutely love making a film. Yeah, I mean, you would do that. Yeah, no, you know, it's 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 just that stubbornness, it's that determination where you know you start something, you want to see it through. Yeah. You know, and, and this project, this project was really difficult to make. You know, this one, you know, we we started with nothing. You know, like you know, literally. You know, Gregor and I were going back and forth in terms of what the idea is. Um, you know, I, I, forgive me, I, I can't remember the exact seed to it, but but essentially, you know, what happens, we had the idea, you know, a, a guy, an actor is going to be his, in his last week in L.A. before he leaves to go home. And so, you know, I knew I wanted to sort of start him on, you know, the first thing we shot was him hiking, and I wanted him to sit down and talk to God. I wanted to sort of him to talk to God before he begins to talk to the people in his life before he leaves. So that was the scene we were going to shoot. So, it, it, you know, the, 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 the place that we shot is not too far from here. We had, we had our little Canon HP 30, and it was myself, Karen, and Gregor, and we had this, we didn't even have, like, true sound for it, so we had, like, this microphone that I plugged in, like, this, this crappy little microphone that, like, really is for a tape recorder, and I, and I plugged that into the camera, and, you know, I know better as a filmmaker, but I was just using what we had, you know, and, and we went out, we, we went out to the wash out here and, um, and we just started filming the scene and Karen was like, sort of like the boom mics, he was like kind of holding the camera and, and during the shoot, like the, the, the microphone fell apart and broke and we couldn't use it anymore. And we, we, did, and we, and we, and we just, you know, we just kept shooting anyway, you know, and, and that was sort of the beginning of that and... You know, I, I said, I said, I've said before, like during screenings, like really, you know, a big part of making this film was just like just just moving forward, and it, it was sort of like a tr an ongoing train wreck that you just try to like try to, you know, you, I don't know how stop what, the hemorrhaging, yeah, stop somehow. the hemorrhaging, or just you know, you just <laughs> it's just it's just a, a train run loose, and you're just trying to like guide it along as best you can, and and th this thing was incredibly difficult, you know, and, and once we got into post production. Um, it, things just kept getting more and more complicated. So, so. Well, you know, I mean, look, uh, uh, there's there's some great. Th I, I just want to share this before we go on to whatever or or whatever happens. Look, there's some number one. There's two or three actors. Uh, by the way, we were stunned. I had no idea that you were in the film. I we we were like, huh. <laughs> and uh, we actually wrote names down. We were like, oh my god. I don't know what you did. I don't know. I don't know if you worked with them. I, I have no idea because we have no idea how, how you filmed it. Uh, but we loved the performances. We thought that was one of the strongest thing of the whole movie. Completely believable people. Yeah. We really we, because that's one of our biggest gripe with independent films. Yes. You know yeah. the whole look shocked. <laughs> and you're like, oh god, really? That's that's your shocked face. And uh, so we love that and. And I don't want to give anyone, but uh, we loved the ending. We just loved it because that's what you get with independent films. I'm not. I, I think you know we just saw a six month rule with Blaine by Blaine, yep. and I'm giving anything away at all. But one of the ballsiest, best endings, and that's what I love about independent. That's what I love that we get to do. Yeah. See, so we get to do things that uh, if we were going a different route, we wouldn't be allowed to do. And I, I really appreciate that. And I, uh, we sat and watched it. And in fact, we were, we both said, I think we know exactly how this is going to end, and we didn't. So that was a huge compliment because normally we know exactly what's going to happen. And uh, but I mean, I mean, what I, you know, I get this sense like, I, I, do you feel defeated? I mean, or, or or do you feel? Are you tired? I'm tired. Well, you know, I've been, I've been working on the website all day, and Dave's been doing a lot of the stuff with the, um, with the the release. So yeah, I mean, there's a part of me that that is tired, and I'm just trying to just move through it. But yeah, I mean, I'm. I'm okay, well, let me ask this. Then look here, you may you can cut this out, but this is really what interests me about we'll talking to other filmmakers. Let's keep it in. Let's keep, we'll keep, keep it. it in. Go ahead. And here's what I really want to sit and talk about filmmakers, not about how it, the film was made and and all that kind of stuff. How do you all get through the day? I mean, it's got to be tough. I mean, because we sit here and go, are other filmmakers going through this same thing that we're going through every day? <laughs> like, is it a struggle? Some mornings we're like, Christ, yeah. we got got to update the website. We've got, you know, <laughs> we've got to go like 
a hundred things on this Twitter. We've got to thank these people. These people were nice enough. And it's it's not a disdain for it, but it's just and then we and then we go through this, both of us. One of us will undoubtedly say this. Are we just wasting our time? Like what, what are we doing here? <laughs> You know, the other person has to be the coach. And God forbid we're both in that same level that day. <laughs> you know, so I'm always, I'm more fascinated by that. Like, what do you all, what, how do you all handle it? Especially as a couple. I mean. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's a really great point. One is the coach and one is the patient. And, and it can take, it can be reverse roles. For me, when, at late at night, like I'm not really that much of a night person. So around like midnight. I get that way, and that's when I turn off the computer and go to bed. But right. and, and I feel better in the morning. But then there are mornings where it's just like, I just can't do this right now. Like I just can't, you know. Yeah. And 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 then and then it reverses. And so I think <coughs> it's this weird thing that when one person is down, the other kind of is up. And yeah, God forbid the time when you're both like oh. that, because it's just no good. And and no. hopefully it's just like one with like this contrarian mindset that's going to go exactly the opposite of the other one. So. I think sometimes just getting out of the house helps me because we're behind our computers so much, and and and, and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Twitter it, can, it just drives you nuts. Like I, I have to turn off TweetDeck. In the last few months, I've been on Twitter way less, and it's just I have to turn it off sometimes and walk away, and and then yeah. come back to it, and then you feel fresh again. But you have to kind of sometimes walk away. I think you're better at sitting and. And, 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 no? no? Nah, okay. I always tell him he is. Yeah, no. I tell him he's great at sitting and editing and all that. And no, it, it's, yeah, no, it, yeah, it, it's definitely a grind, you know, and, and we're in a position where it, it's even, I, the, like, sort of that burden, like, the heavy burden is even heavier because we've been at this for, for over three years, you know, where, where we've been grinding it out, like, really, it's been intense for the last three years, you know, because yeah. you know, as we started to film Curs, the radio show, at that same, like a couple weeks or a couple months in, we started filming Goodbye Promise. So we, we, we you know, we, we just figured, cool, we'll, we'll continue to make movies. We'll, we'll do this radio show thing, and and then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, like like film courage just keeps kind of like taking on its own life, and 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 so that's just getting bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, for me, it's like I'm not really spending that much time making the movie, and so there's all that conflict that comes from that. Um, it, it's look we go through the same thing I mean you know and and it's you know it's a it's a struggle it takes the toll on the relationship because we have to you know there's I think what you said is truth is you've got to get away from this and at the same time I think I'm I, I don't know how you are at this I'll get away from it for an hour I'll leave and I'll start feeling guilty like well fuck you know I mean Christ I <laughs> and it's it's just this mind screw that um, you know it's we don't get to just make the movie and worry about making the movie. It's it's it is a twenty four seven thing that is you know, because we've been we've been since isolation. What is this? Six years? Six seven years? That. I think what, what kills us the most is we've spent six or seven years and we haven't been able to show anybody anything. We haven't been, you know, our... Try explaining that to your family. My yeah. parents are like, yeah, you're doing a movie. Yeah. Because we're not <laughs> even sure allowed to show uh, isolation because our consultant wants us to wait until after Crawl, Bitch, Crawl and put it out because he's like, you'll be able to sell that to certain parts of your audience. So, you know, we feel like we get that every day now, one of us. Like, are we wasting our time? Uh, you know, the same thing, Karen. We, and, and while I understand other filmmakers sending you their scripts, I, I go, how, why, how, why am I going to read your 112 pages? I've got, I've got Twitter to do. I've got to update Instagram. I've got to do Pinterest. I've got, and I'm like, it's, it's, <laughs> crazy it it is literally an insane way of life and sometimes i have no idea how we make it through it and still talk to each other because it just becomes but i'm the same as you like i have to get away and and the fact that we live somewhere currently that's like in the middle of nowhere the the closest thing is walmart and I was like, I never thought there'd be a day where I was excited about a trip to Walmart. I'd be like, I'm going to Walmart today. I, we need coffee creamer. Yes! 
I'm all, like excited to get out. And I'm like, Jen, that's sad. <laughs> yeah, it's but, uh, it's uh, yeah. it's uh, it's the things that nobody ever writes about. There's nothing romantic about sitting in front of the computer screen for 10 hours on time, retweeting and thanking and, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, we constantly go, what are we doing? And we're like, well, we're filmmakers. And we're like, what? We're not filmmakers. We're social media hounds. Like, that's what we do. I, you know, it is a, that's why I say, literally the test audience, I think, kind of saved my belief in what I'm doing because that made it all worth it for me because everything else then went away and I was like if I could have that feeling once a year I I could I could stomach doing this if I don't have that feeling I don't know if I could do this for another 20 years yeah yeah no, it's, I mean, it's tough it's really tough yeah no I mean I, I you know we're, there's no question we're in the same boat okay I mean you know I mean that that comes up you know, not just once a day. I mean, that comes up <laughs> so you all, just all, all, time. Yeah, all, all day long. That's coming up for us. Like, what, what the hell are we doing? Like, oh, yeah. you know, is, is any of this worth anything? Um, and, and that's also part of the reasoning in terms of, at least for me, like, I feel like I, I have to do something. Like, I, I can't, I can't just sit in this space. And, and that, that's where sort of just like this leap of faith. Um, and, and in terms of me, you know, yes, I'm exhausted. Yes, I'm tired. Yes, I'm getting less sleep. Um, but I'm not necessarily depressed right now. I, I feel energized, you know, and that's what I wanted to do to myself. Is I wanted to give myself that, that, that purpose, you know, I, yeah. you know, I think it's so important to have that purpose and, and you sort of touched on the test screening for you. Um, for me, um, you know, like I, I've gone from making so many little short films and then, you know, I, I've made night before the wedding, which was the film before this one. And, right. and now I made this one and, and sort of the path for me has been like, you know, you, you finish the film and you send it off to like li these little review sites and, and you get, you get the feedback and, and you get all excited when you get these great write-ups about your work or whatever. And, and, and that's sort of been my path. And then, you know, I, I figured it would be similar with Goodbye Promise, you know, kind of do the same thing, get it out to these, these, these bloggers and, and review sites and have them review it. Um, because of the work that Karen and I did for two years hosting screenings in LA at the downtown independent, we had a relationship there, you know, and we decided we, we want to screen the film there um, for, for two nights. We were just going to do one Thursday and another Thursday because we felt like that's all we're going to be able to do is we're all, we're only going to be able to get like 400 people to come out and see the film. I don't know if we can do more of that here in LA. And, and as we approached the, the owner, Jim Kirst, he said, you know what, Dave, I really, I really want you to do a, a full week run. And then, you know, maybe you'll get a chance at the LA times and some other, you know, some other press. And, and, and to be honest, the deal for the week run was actually a better financial deal than it would have been for the two nights. So it's kind of like, I guess we have to do the theatrical run. We knew we probably wouldn't fill the seats at all, but it's just like, if you have a chance at some big press, it's like, you're going to take that path. So we went with the theatrical run. And at the very last minute, we're like, Jim, where's this LA Times info? And then finally, like, he gets it to us under the wire, and we have to be somewhere. And we get the email, like, at, like, 1 o'clock or something. We got to be somewhere at 3. And he's like, this DVD, the screener needs to arrive overnight. It needs to be there by noon tomorrow. Otherwise, it's a no deal. So... So we, we sort of race, we get, the, we get the screener ready, we get it in the mail, we, we make it to where we have to be, and then on the car ride, I mean, it costs $18. $18 overnight. Yeah. I'm driving, I'm waiting for him in the post office, like, okay, we got to go, we got to, and then we finally, yeah, and, and it's you're just like, just like, did I just waste $18? Yeah, it's just like, it's just like, what am I doing? Like, you know, <laughs> like, no one's seen the film yet, like, no one has seen the film yet, and I'm sending our film to the LA Times to be reviewed, <laughs> and it's just like... And I just spent eighteen dollars to do it, and they're gonna look at this film, and they're gonna totally bash it. And now I'm like, like, or, or you know, I didn't think at first. I thought like, there's no way they're gonna review it. There's no way they're gonna talk about this film. So I'm like, you know, I just, I just wasted eighteen bucks. And then I start thinking like, you know what? If they do review it, they're gonna totally bash it. You know, so, you know, then that, then that review comes in, and 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 it's this glowing review, and it just kind of like, re really from really from that point forward. It's just like really nothing else. I don't need any other validation. So it's like no yeah. matter. It's like no matter what happens, no matter if some. 
Because what's happened is we've had a couple of smaller critics review the film since, and, and they've, they haven't given it those glowing reviews, you know? Right. So if I had gone that same route and, and gone to those same people as I had done in the past, I wouldn't have this, this feeling of just like validation and satisfaction. It's like now it's like it doesn't matter. I, you know, it's like no matter what anyone says, I have, I have the LA Times behind me and it feels, it feels really good. I was just going to say, and we didn't even think anything of it. We were just like, we, we sent it out there. We thought it probably won't even get reviewed. And I think you found out about it on Twitter. You were on the phone, and, and, and some yeah. tweet came in. And, and yeah. so, I mean, it just it was just weird how all that happened. And I'm not even sure what my point was. But it, it just, yeah, yeah, you got to just put it out there. I guess I guess that's the, the lesson. Well, I mean, the, the things that I find fascinating about that, which is probably good for us to hear, is that it's just as crazy for everybody else's as it is for us. Because, I mean, just the scenario that you're talking about where all of a sudden you're running around like... Cr I mean, that's the mind screw to me of this whole thing. You run around like a lunatic trying to meet some deadline and you go, why, what, is this going to matter? Like, what, we've done this 20 times and nothing ever... Ha but you just, you got to take every chance. And, and again... What you just said, you got a, a, a tweet about this, like that. And again, so that's why we do all the work. That's why we force ourselves on there every day because, look, I can't deny our one of our saviors has been Peter Broderick. And you know how we found out about him? Because I put a tweet out that I was needing to find someone that was really experienced. Ted Hope saw it, said I suggest Peter Broderick, use my name, and we got to sit and meet Peter Broderick. And I go... So while I sit here and I laugh, and it's very good therapeutically for us to hear that we're not the only ones that go work like crazy and can't stand it, but we love it, and it's just a daily challenge, the truth is these little payoffs start to build up, you know, and, and it's just these that would only be there because of everything that we're doing, you know. Uh, still, it's difficult. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think it's more difficult for you than me. I, I wake up every morning and, and I, I get my cup of coffee and I go, all right, there's, there's Facebook, there, okay, I've got them all up. All right, let's start here. And I just go, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It is. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. and on our side, we, we, it's a very difficult to manage you know, the amount of requests that we're getting. I mean, there's, there's, so, there's so many emails, there's, you know, there's so many things happening on Twitter, on Facebook. And, and you know, we're, we're trying to manage our time as best we can. At the same time, we're trying, we're trying to do the things it takes to finish a film. We're doing the things it takes to, to sort of, you know, to have it completed, get it ready for release. And it, just just all this stuff, you know, and, and, and have, a, have a life on top of it. So it's... Let me ask you all. Okay, so... Because I was laughing my ass off about this because somebody was having a hard time one day and I was like, I was like, <laughs> I made the mistake. I, I said, look, I, you know, when we first met and we talked about, and I told you this has been my path because I had done isolation on my own and I knew what it was going to take to go through this again. And I was like, look, I'm just telling you, you want to start dating me and being this, this is my life. This is what I do. And she was like, I'll never forget it. <laughs> it was like... What are you kidding? This is so exciting. This is making a movie. And I was like, okay. And so I brought that back up and she's like, yeah, look, let me tell you right now, if I would have known all this, I might have had a different answer back then. But I go, do you remember why you started this all in the beginning? Like, I have to go back to that sometimes and go, I remember going, this is what I want to do and why. Like, can you remember when you guys were like, we're, we're going to... We want to be in the film business. I remember the day we had the conversation about the radio show. I remember that day. Um, the film business, I don't know, because it's just always been a part of, of when I met you. You were always wanting to do that. And I had been on again, off again about acting, and then I'd get a regular day job and, and give it up and all that. And so, But now I think Film Courage has just really taken over our lives. And really? I, I'm more about that right now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and for me, uh, um, it started. It started with, um, you know, my story goes way back to, to to sort of like my last year in college. You know, where I sort of had this idea of of like making a movie. I don't know where it came from. I just kind of had this idea of I just I just want to sort of write this this story idea, 
And, um, you know, so I recruited some of my friends to, to, to sort of write this screenplay with me. And, you know, that, that turned into this ambition of coming to L.A. to make this movie, the, the four of us. And uh, we, we ended up making the journey. And then that thing really didn't pan out uh, at all. It kind, of, it kind of fizzled. And yet here we are in L.A. And so I had to go backwards and, and really start figuring out, like, structure and, and storytelling and that sort of thing. After a couple of years of that, it was like, okay, um, you know, what, what do you have to show for? I didn't have anything to show for it. So then I started getting into, like, trying to just do a couple, you know, a few improv short films. And it really has just been a progression of, of one thing or another. You know, it just, I, I can't remember at this point in time, like, what that initial seed was in terms of making movies. It just, like... It was just this dream, this goal. Um, as I was finishing college, like, what am I going to do with my life? And and that that really, it was just something deep within me. Um, you know, certainly didn't think it would lead us uh, this far on this sort of wide ranging path. Um, right. You know, and, and then really, as we got ready to promote our first film, um, you know, we started. You know, I, I started to recognize, like, you know what? No one's going to care about this film. We don't have any kind of audience. Um, you know, you know, we we had done we had done an interview. Um, as guests on, on an LA talk radio show, we saw how cool that studio was. Yeah. And, and I saw that, you know, cause what happened was, um, our film has a porn star in it. The first one that the night before the wedding, it's a bachelor party movie. And, and the porn star was supposed to do the radio interview with us. She ended up not being able to make it. And Karen came along for the ride. Um, just, just to be a part of the experience, and I really wanted her there. Now, I was wondering where that story was going. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're getting the real, you're getting the real stuff here. You're getting the real stuff. So, <laughs> just that the porn star couldn't show up, so Karen showed up. I was like, what? <laughs> okay, all right, I'm going with you. Keep going. <laughs> I've had a bad back ever since. No, I'm kidding. All right, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, uh, sorry. No, no. So we, we, we did this. We did. We, you know, she ended up in the studio, and we and we did we did that interview together. You know, and she got to talk about the film, and she got to talk about her life. That was cool. And and we got back in the car, and we drove home. And for me, I, I could just see the excitement on her face. You know, and, and she's like, I really love that experience of, of doing doing that that interview. And and so you know, some some other things happened after that, and and, and along the way, we just said, you know what, let, let's. Let, let's start our own radio show where we can kind of do it the way we want to do it. Cause we, cause we're, you know, as we continue to try to gather press, I mean, I guess the reason why film courage started is cause as we were looking around and saying like, okay, how do we make people aware of our film? The kind of outlets, the kind of outlets that we wanted at that time, we couldn't find, you know? And, and when I typed in like film podcasts or independent film podcasts, there was nothing. I'm like, I'm like, what is going on? Like, why doesn't, the kind of content that, that I want to have out there, um, you know, that's sort of like this gateway to independent film. Why doesn't that exist? So, so I guess that became an inciting um, seed or something. And so as we started to think of like what we wanted to do with our show, like that was sort of, um, that, that was the, the, the whole idea behind it. And, 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 I, and, 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 and as we did that, then that sort of took on a life of its own. You know, we, you know that's its own, that's its own story there. Do y'all still love it? Yeah, I think there's parts of it we really love. Yeah, we love hearing people's stories. We love like reaching out to some filmmaker and and seeing if they'd be excited to come on or 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 write an article or whatever it is, and then them saying yes and like that new contact. It's almost like closing a sale or something in some ways right. to us. And uh, so I like that, and I like finding out about, you know, unusual films and stories and stuff. I think the part that gets hard is all the, the stuff that you feel obligated to do the social media, and it, it's a necessary evil. You have to. Mm -hmm. And um, the emails, it gets a lot. I mean, it's just, it, it's a lot, you know. And so I think just feeling like, and if you don't get back to someone in time, then you feel bad. And, and, and I like to be able to always get back to people, and I, I can always. And I've, I've let my Twitter go. Like, I, I don't even follow people back now, and I feel bad, but I just... It's just, it was out of control for a while and I had followed a bunch of people and then it was stuck. And so just dealing with like that whole social media stuff. And now there's Tumblr, there's Pinterest. There's, I mean, it's just like Google plus, I mean. No, and it's never going to end. Right. Yeah. You, know, you realize it. It's just, it, there's always going to be new platforms. There's always, yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it is insane. I mean, I think yeah. you gave up on a couple platforms. You just were like, forget well, it. I'm not doing it. 
Yeah. I struggle weekly with doing like, I'm just going to delete everything and just forget it. Like, I'm so <laughs> done with social media. And then I'm like, okay, you can't do that. But, yeah, sometimes I just have to just not do it for a while. Because I just get too, it's too overwhelming sometimes. I'm because you, like, you know what I hate about it is, is that you, it becomes such a, a job that you forget the great things that happen. You know, you guys gave us probably the biggest jump start that we ever had when you guys were nice enough to put us on your show because we literally, our followers doubled. Yeah. Uh, and then we met David online. I met Peter Broderick online. We met Jesse. We met, you know, uh, Gavin. I mean, there's a bunch of people that we've met that yeah. we, there's no way we would have ever met without social media. It's just... There just reaches a point to where you go, okay, these people we've never spoken to before in our entire lives, and they've sent us five messages to retweet their thing, and we go, well, I, you know, they're a filmmaker, and they're trying to make it, but, and, you, and, and you know, you just get a wave of it, and you're like, I'm still trying to make a movie here, and I'm still trying to cut a trailer, I'm trying to get a poster together, I'm trying to get followers, I'm trying to cover this campaign. And you're just like, good <laughs> lord, Plus, you really? gotta, I mean, the internet brings out the crazy in some people. I yeah. mean, there's just no avoiding that. And it's just like, who are you? You're yeah. insane. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know what needs to happen is, see, we need to come over with a bottle of wine and play charades, and then, and then the next morning everything's fine. Then I can go back to social media. <laughs> it's the going to bed at 12 o'clock at night, turning social media off, Waking up six hours later and turning social media right back on. Right. And you, you, literally, we can lose a week. We can be like, what day is this? Yeah. 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 And, and damn, yeah. follow Friday comes along, and I'm like, <laughs> God, I don't I have to, I can't even say, what am I going to do? I'm like, why? Well, yes, follow Friday. Yes, thank you. Yeah, oh, 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 God, I left that person out. I was like, oh, but I don't even know what to do here. I give up on this. I, I would kill that person if I ever met that person. Well, that person's got to be going, uh, shooting themselves because that's not how they intended it. It was supposed to be you pick one person that week that you were inspired by for whatever reason and give a follow Friday shout out to that one person. He's tweeted about it. He was like, I never intended for it to become this insane, like every person you're following, follow that person. But it just turned into that. See, now, but if I were to do that, I would get email. I know I'd get email. Did I piss you off? Why? Why are you not? Why know. are you just? And I'd be like, oh. that's why I just, I just thank people who do to me now. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, and it's yeah. not that I mean to leave anybody out, and it's just it's become so overwhelming. Yeah, it's it's, it's it, yeah. I mean that, that that's I sort do the of, same thing. Yeah, that's like the very weird and dark side of social media. You know, where it's like all oh, of yeah. a sudden you don't send someone back a follow Friday, and then. You, you know, you start wondering, like, are, are we still cool or like, what's going on? It's just like, if you just take away the social media, everything would be perfect. Like, you know, you wouldn't have these thoughts at all. But because we're so connected, it's just like you start wondering, like, what, what the hell do we do? Like, why isn't this person talking to us or whatever? So, That's right. That's you know, right. That yeah. jerk didn't follow right in me. Right. It's kind <laughs> of like. Everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Do you all remember? It's you know what it's like. Do you remember the MySpace days when everybody used to. The top, the, the top friends, like, wait a minute, I was number two on their top friends, now I'm number nine, what, did I piss you, wait a minute, send them an email, did we piss them off, or, or God forbid, you weren't on their top friends yeah. anymore, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's crazy the way it's all worked out, yeah. I mean, it just is, but, you know, uh, you know, here's the thing I'm going to say, I had this very interesting conversation about social media and film. I had this with David, actually. I, I won't make it last more than a minute, but I think there's actually something to look at here. <clears throat> well, I've been on social media since MySpace and working it hard every day. So five, six, six years Even easily. Longer than that, yeah. And now I've spent all this time and let's say collectively I put all those people together all the platforms, all my friends, and let's say there's 40,000 with them all together. And I'll put something out and I may get 10 or 15 retweets or sometimes 30 likes collectively, which is fine. That doesn't bother me. Now, here's the thing, and this has really intrigued me. 
I've spent five or six years gathering up this this audience. I literally, and you, and and I've I've had I've never had a magazine contact me. I've never had anybody contact me over all that work about a project I'm on. Nobody's ever contacted me on that. Um, I put out a press release with my teaser trailer, four pictures, and a paragraph, and we had 20 articles written about us within five days. Now, I go, does that mean that social media, because they didn't care, they didn't, they didn't go to my platforms and go, well, they're only on Facebook, or they only have 100 friends, and so I go, in a sense, is it a waste of time? Because I got more reaction out of sending these press releases to these magazines and these uh, established, you know, Fangoria, Bloody Disgusting and all that. I sent them a professional press release and within five days, every single one of them wrote about me. We had more hit counts on our teaser trailer than any other video we've ever put up. And I go, and at the same time, I have been trying for day after day and day and day and day, and I can never get more than five people, ten people a day to react to something I put on social media. So I do wonder sometimes, is it really working? Yeah, well, it, because it, it, it's a collection, you know, it's a collection, Oak, you know, it, it's, you know, number one is... You know, the funk that, that we often fall into, or at least, um, you know, we fall into and we see is that it, it doesn't it doesn't start with social media. You know, like that, that's not where you go first, you know, and and and, and, and unfortunately, part of building an audience is you're going to start engaging with people. Um, I, I guess you, you have to start somewhere, you know, so you might not have the product yet, but you have to start engaging with people. You that's know, right. But, but in terms of the way, it, it, in terms of the way it's all going to work, the way it's all going to come together, is is when you know you have you have a little bit of that audience, but but really you're leading with the product first. You know that's right. And, that's right. You know, and, and, and you and you, ha and you have that that high level, kick ass product that people are like, oh my god, this is incredible. Like when, right. when you when you come to the floor with that, and and then and then you begin you use like social you know social media, then it's really going to come together. You know, but when, when, when you're seeing, that right. you know, when you're seeing it all spark, um, you know, when you're seeing like all the press releases and all that stuff kind of happen, you know, I, I believe certainly, you know, because, you know, Karen can speak on this as well. When we're hit up by a lot of filmmakers and stuff, um, we, we will take a look in terms of, you know, what, how do they stand in terms what's their stature on Facebook, right. on Twitter, right. you know, like, because you just get a sense in terms of like, do people care about this? Are, are, are these people that, that get behind their own work? Um, you know, because there's a lot of people out there that are just looking for, they're, they're waiting to be discovered. Um, right. You know, they're, they're, they're not putting in, they're not rolling up their sleeves, they're not putting in that work. Um, you know, and, and I believe, you know, so it, it's, a, it's a requirement, but you're not going to really see it come together until, until the work is really out there and you're leading with the work. Um, you know, that's and, a very good point. Because, I mean, yeah, that's a very good point because... The reason all these magazines jumped on us is because we gave them the content. You know, yeah. I sent them the trailer, I sent them the photographs, I sent them the article, and versus me just sending them what I'm going to do. Exactly. You know, uh, so yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. But I think, I think, I think what it really drove home for me is you realize that it is a balancing act. You know, you, you, it's not the end all and be all. Sometimes we kill ourselves and try and become, you know, we try to get 15 new people following us. We try to get this. And I go, you know what? Just kind of let that happen. Put your work in. Let that grow. But once the product comes out, that will kind of take care of itself. I don't think you can ignore it. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. We didn't have a product. You know, that's what we spent years doing. You know, building us up to sixteen hundred followers. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, but that, but honestly, what you're touching on there—that that's what I was going to touch on—is really for like the last year. Um, you know, 
on our end, you know, we're not we're not necessarily monitoring the followers as much. We're not we're not monitoring the the, the Facebook likes as much. It's just like we're at a point now where you know we, we feel like we've gotten it up to a comfortable level. Um, you know, whereas you know it gets competitive. You know, it's just like you know you just you just want to like you see other people have like five thousand likes on Facebook. It's just like like you know what are they doing? What's the yeah. magic? And it's like you want that. Um, but it's just like you know what. Over the last year, at least for me, I can't totally speak for Karen. For me, it's just like I don't care about that anymore. That like that's off the table, you know, because we we've gotten ourselves to a point where that that doesn't matter anymore. And for me, it's just like we we want we want to put out the very best content we can. And yes. and if if people are gonna follow us, if they're gonna like us, it, it's not gonna be because of like we have so many followers or likes. It's gonna be because the content is so compelling that they just have to follow, they have to be a part of it. And that, that, that there's been a major shift there. So we continue to engage with people on Twitter, on Facebook, but at least for me, I don't care about the numbers anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm done caring about the numbers. And I gotta say this, because this is just, I get so fired up over clout, okay? <laughs> I'm so tired of clout. Clout is a manufactured competition. And I actually told, I removed myself from clout because I started getting these tweets from people Oh, your cloud score is only like 31. Mine's 70. And I'm uh, like, what the? So cloud is like a waste of my time. Well, you know, and it, you know what that is to me. It's, it's, it's again the same thing you were talking about, which is we all get caught up. I, I guess that's what I was trying to say. You know, I mean, we, uh, me personally, I don't know about everybody. You know, you get caught up in thinking that your value is these social media platforms. You know, uh, how am I doing over here on Twitter? Well, how many people do we have on Facebook? Well, okay, well now nobody's liking our stuff on Facebook, so you jump over. And it's kind of like, it really is a mind screw. It's because, and I guess that was my point. Yeah. Okay. I went, holy Christ. Yeah. These, when we sent out, when we, I literally thought we might have three people write articles about a teaser trailer. And I realized it's because people aren't putting content out. The majority of people are on there. They'll make a poster. They'll retweet they're going to do something. And I just, it, it's, it really is insanity. In one respect, I really do believe it is insanity. I mean, we just literally, all we do is just, uh, I could see our fans are going to have a heart attack. With we, we've, got, we've got that feed on TweetDeck, and then we just scroll through it going, what? Oh, okay, wait, wait, what is that? And then we go, all right, retweet that. Okay, and then you go, through, and I've got my mentions column over here, and I'm like, I don't even know who that is, and you know, what, no, no. And I just go, my God, was, was Stanley Kubrick doing this? Like, what, was he? And I go, no. <laughs> no, he was running around making movies and making these things that nobody saw, these crazy little five-minute films that he was showing on the side of buildings. And I was like, are we just screwed? Like, what is going on? But I don't know. I think it's finding that balance. And, and I, I, I'd be the first one to say I don't think we have found the balance yet. Because it's still, it is a, it is a cause of turmoil here, at least once every three or four days. On from one of us, like, oh my God, okay, please, you've got to handle that this more. I, I, I can't look at this anymore. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's insanity. But for some reason, and I guess that's what I can't get an answer to, of why we feel it's so important. And I go, I don't know. I think it's that stupid thing. Like, I know on Instagram, if you post a picture and it gets, like, over a certain amount of likes, it's like, oh, that got 20 likes, and it feels good for some stupid reason. Like, that's going to do anything for you in the large scheme of things, but you're just like... Right, because I don't know if this has happened to you all, but this even happened today, I swear. I, I put up a, a Crawl Bitch Crawl image, and it got, like, 39 likes, and I was like, yes! <laughs> and I was like, all right. Um, Can we afford coffee cream this week? What? What? No. Yeah. The world <laughs> didn't change. The Lionsgate didn't call. Nobody's like, wow, you are somebody now. And I'm like, well, how did I get caught up in giving a shit whether somebody likes it five times or 32 times? And then I'll find myself looking at somebody 
Michael isn't even an artist and they've got 552 likes. And I'm like, how's this son of a bitch got 552 <laughs> likes? And I go, it's, it, it's, yeah, I don't know. it's crazy. It yeah. literally is crazy, I think. You know, I can't imagine what it's going to be like in 15 years. I literally, I, I, I just, my dream, this will sound horrible. Should I say it? I don't know. My dream know. is to be able to fund my movies and just delete every account except for one and then just go, you all can go on there and say whatever you want. I'm not, I'll come in every once in a while and go, Merry Christmas. And <laughs> Like, 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 yeah. Right. Oak, you're not the only one that feels that way, believe mm -hmm. me. You know, we, yeah. we, we, we spoke to a lot of people um, that, that, that would share those same feelings, you know. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it'd be nice to be that point. You know, it's it's like, it's like it's just it's just part of the hustle in terms of where we're at. You know, I, yeah. I, per, I personally believe that, you know, you have to build up a certain level of influence so that as you begin to spread your message, um, you know, because you... you for me, I always like kind of view like you have to kind of get your, your yourself above the noise or above the clouds, so that as you begin to sort of spread your message, you'll have like quicker access to the people that really matter, you know. And and if if you're not above the the, the noise, it's like you're so far down that it just it just takes longer and it takes more effort to just kind of get your message out in in that quick and easy manner. So, well, you know, that's a point I wanted to bring up before I forget because this is probably something. Uh, that was on more on topic than what I took us on. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, that's, that's one thing that you were saying. You know, because we are interacting social media and because things take so long, that has become one of the biggest challenges as filmmakers for us, which is, okay, let's say we go six months and get in the film festival. Okay, then we're still looking at another four or five months before it's open to the public. Because whatever deal we strike, whether we strike a deal, whether we have to do something else, so we're looking probably at another 8 to 12 months before it can be sold as a DVD on, online and everything. And I go, how do you sustain fans to be interested in a project that long? You know, you can't put out five teaser trailers. You know, so it's, it's become a pacing thing for us because we go... I mean, I literally get people that are angry. They want that trailer. And, you know, our distribution consultant is like, no, you're not putting that trailer out until you're in a film festival and in about two weeks before that. And so we go, well, how are we going to keep our fans? How are we going to grow? How are we going to keep momentum going? And we go, we're not. We don't have, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing to do. So I think that's something I learned from David Baker. I got to give him credit on this, which was, I know next time, now that we know this, we are going to legitimately spend four or five days filming a whole pre-story to whatever story we're going to tell so that we can put out little two-minute uh, videos online so, they, for, so for gaps like this, something can be being shared instead of, hey, go like our Facebook page because how many, how many ways can you say that? Sorry, you got it. Yeah, no, it's, no, 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 it's totally, the, totally. Uh, food. Oh, sorry. Oh, got a little, he just freaked little, out. Little cat craziness over here. <laughs> um, he just freaked yeah, out. You know, I, 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 what can I say? I mean, we're, you know, we're in a position where, um, you know, we're creating so much content um, like like this um, that we do through film courage. So you know, I, we're we're just. Do you guys have your air conditioner off? We have for, it off, yeah. It's yeah. so, yeah, so we, We're sitting here going, man, Christ, man, this is how hot is, it? Here. <laughs> how hot is it there? Today was like 103. Oh, oh wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. it's similar. Yeah, similar, yeah. Here. So similar heat here. Yeah, so, you know, but this is, you know. So what, coming you over for dinner. More, do you guys have any more questions for us by chance? Uh... Well, I mean, I do have a couple questions real quick. I'll make them real quick for you. One, uh, now that you've done this, do you, do you feel as a filmmaking crew there that you need a break or are you fired up to start on the next thing? That's a good like, question. where are you guys at emotionally on that? 
I think, oh, I'll just start. And, yeah, please, um, please. I think creatively we want to do something, but for so long we're not doing creative stuff. We've been doing the, the tweeting, the, the emails, all that. And it's not like, it's not my forte, you know? I'd rather do something creative. So I think that's, for yeah. me, where I'm at. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's been, it's been such a burden on my shoulders, um, you know, mainly because Film Courage did become its own animal and, and trying to make a film at the same time. I mean, it's, it's never taken me three years to complete like a film before. So it, right. it's, it's, it's really, that, that becomes really difficult, you know, because, you know, you're essentially like, as you begin to promote and put something out there, you know, you're making a promise to, to your audience, like you said, you know, right. you're spending, you know, you're, you're making a promise, like we're going to finish this and we're going to give you a chance to see it. So the fact that this is sort of taken so long and obviously when you crowdfund, um, that just adds to that burden. So for the last few years, yeah. you know, I've, I've, I've really had this like just heavy weight on my shoulders. Um, and, and you touched on it earlier, Oak, you know, in, in terms of, you know, you really can't do anything right now until Crawl Bitch Crawl is really out there. You just, you right. kind of feel this weight. And then that, that's exactly how I felt for the last couple of years. It's like, um, you know, we have our first film is available on Amazon. Um, this one, we, we finally are, are like releasing it. It's like, yes, I mean, I, I've, I've jotted down a lot of different ideas of things that I would love to be able to develop and go make. Um, but for now, I'm content doing with what Karen and I do with Film Courage. Um, and, and really, I just haven't been able to commit any time whatsoever to, to really fleshing out an idea that, you know, that I really want to go and make another film until... Um, until we release this film, until like it's all the way done, then right. maybe I'll be able to sort of take a take a step back, breathe a little bit, and then see what's there. Because this is scary for me, because this is like, you know, I mean, we shot we shot the film three years ago, and we've kind of done pickups along the way, but um, there wasn't a script for this film, so I haven't really written a script now since going back to 2008. Um, and so, it's like you have to find that creative energy energy within, you know, and it's and I've been sort of in marketing distribution promotion mode yeah. for a long for, 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 for a long time now and it's just like yeah. I'm kind of like scared after, after we come to the end of this push am I gonna be able to like turn back within and have that story there that I'm gonna like feel that deep passion for of like let's go on let, let's do this all over again you know because that, that's what it is so like let, let's do it all over again so that, that, that that's kind of where I'm at right now um, you know and and, and so you know, and I'm sure it's the same for you. It's like you have so many ideas, so many stories that you do want to tell, and and sort of the the draw to the, those ideas kind of they kind of come and go. You know, it's just like one day right. it's just like that one idea, like just the ideas won't stop coming to you, um, and then and then maybe a couple weeks later it changes, and there's like this other idea you've been tinkering around in your head, and so there's like that that give and take that that's that's happening there. And meanwhile, I'm just like, no, no, I'm like, I'm like, no, stay, stay out. I, I got, I gotta like, I gotta get this film done. I gotta put it out there. I, I have to stay committed. You know, you don't want to get too distracted. Oh yeah. Hey, look, look at, look at how many little side projects she and I started during this whole <laughs> process. I mean, you know, I was doing this little web series. I did three. I was like, what the hell am I doing? She did some, I did some, you know, just anything to fill up the time creatively. And, uh, but, you know, it's one thing I always feel is good for artists to share with other artists uh, so that they don't ever think they're alone. Look, we went through that same exact conversation of what you just said. Uh, you know, Nicole who said to me, I remember we were sitting here and she was like, uh, you know, our, uh, we sent off our film to Peter Broderick to see what he thought of it and what he thought we might be able to do with it. And we were waiting. And I was like, look, you know, prepare yourself. You know, just if, if he comes back and doesn't like it, doesn't mean we're going to stop. And it, it, it probably wasn't the right words for me to say at that moment. Because it literally looked like all the blood drained out of her. And she just sat there in silence. And I was like, you okay? And she was like, I don't, I don't know that I can go through that whole process again and just have nothing happen. You know, and, and it was that moment that every artist goes through. I've gone through it. You know, it, it's... It's uh, it's tough, but I think that's a natural thing. I think that once you do a project and you get out there, the reason you do another project is there was something that you didn't capture, you know. But for me, I always need a little bit of downtime and to re-energize, and because you're still in a fight. I mean, you're still your goal is to get it out there to as many people as possible, and that's tough. I mean, it's hard. 
Yeah. Yeah. We, it's we, stressful. We, it's. Yeah. No, we've spent, you know, we've spent already 12, 16 hour day, whatever it is. I don't know how many hours, but we've spent, you know, um, we're a few days in now. So we're like, you know, uh, three, four days into our campaign right now. And it's taken that much energy with everything we've already done previous. That's right. And, and, and we just went over a hundred dollars and we're offering our film for one dollar. So uh, I know in that it's the craziest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like but, literally when we were doing our, our hardcore indie thing, we would watch people going, Hey, I'm at, I'm at Jimmy Chang's restaurant and all that. And we're like, <laughs> They can't give us a dollar? Like, they, we're offering a dollar buy-in, and they just wrote me and said they don't have a dime, but they're at Chang's eating. <laughs> and, and you just, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, what do we quite. say? We'd wake up in the morning and go, okay, put the monkey suit on. You got the symbols? All right, <laughs> here we go. Let's go to work. And it's, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it's tough. But, again, I really enjoyed your film. Uh, I did too. I'm really, really excited to see how this works. And I, I honestly go, <clears throat> I hope it blows out of the water because I went, man, what an interesting concept. If, if you guys, if the film community and the fans get behind what you're doing, that's a platform. That's a platform that other filmmakers could go, well, I don't have to go on Netflix. I can go to Indiegogo, and I, if I've got my audience there, and I can make, I've made my film for a hundred bucks, and I can make twenty five thousand on it. That's profit. I can take that and go start another one. So I, I really, I, I have high hopes for it. I really do. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, we do too. You know, and it, even though I'm describing the the hustle that it takes just to get a hundred people to pay a dollar, um, you know, in this case, I mean, our average donation right now, our average contribution is seven dollars so that that's pretty wild the fact that um right you know we, we've had over a hundred people now contribute and the you know we've had two people give hundred dollar donations that that's pretty wild it's pretty wild when yeah, all, good. all you're offering is an online rental of your film but there's someone who, who who's you know there's a couple people that, that are so passionate about the film they believe in it so strongly and on top of that they believe in sort of this 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 path that we're taking with the film that they're like, you know what? I want to, I want to just get by. It's not, it's not even the money. It's just, it's really just a statement of just how strongly they feel about it. Yeah. Where they're just gonna say like, just do it, just go for it. So, for for me, that was really touching. You know, it, it was just yeah. really touching oh, to, to kind of get those kind of contributions. Cool. Um, I think I lost my train of and thought. And also there. some of the emails too that we've gotten from people just about how it ties into their own journey. So when you see that, it's like, okay, wow. It's like what you guys talked about watching it in the audience or, or with the audience and high, seeing them high five each other. With our film, it's, it's we've had some people that maybe have been, you know, it, it's been more sad in some sense, but they've come to sort of a realization in their life. So I think when we get emails like that or comments, that's really, that's like, okay, oh, wow, yeah. this was all worth it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and yeah. honestly, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not depressed. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tired and I'm, I'm going to be tired through this whole stretch, but yeah. I, I, I really feel energized. I feel great. Um, I, I, knew, I, you know, we knew going into it that this was going to be a ton of work to get these, to get these early people to, to buy this film, you know, at the same time, we didn't want to just give it away for free, you know, you know, to right. the, the value of, of getting people to actually, you know, a, an actual transaction, you know, that's what you want. You don't want to just, just have, you know, you, you want to sort of create that because that, that's, you know, part of that is like, is like creating a, a lifestyle or, or, or not a lifestyle, but just, you know, you want to create that as an artist, you know, you, you want to offer the work. We didn't want it. We didn't want to just offer free. We just want to offer it to people and just kind of, and, and, and let the whole thing work its magic a little bit. Um, you know, and, and I guess the other thing I was going to touch on was, um, you know, we wanted to make it, we just wanted to make it super easy, not, not just, not just for the audience, but for us, you know, and, and really, I don't know, you know, just, you know, not, not that we're like depressed or like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just really frustrating because there's no guarantee you can get on, you know, iTunes, you need an aggregator and, and there's like, there's no clear path just, just to get it on that platform, you know? And so that, that's kind of frustrating. I guess, I guess the, the, the one where it's like the least resistance, I guess would be Amazon, you know? So if, if you want to just go right to Amazon and sort of work that, that one has the least resistance. It doesn't necessarily have like the the best payout for the artists. And of course, you're gonna to have to put a lot of work in on that platform, but that would be another way to go. But even Netflix, 
that, that, you know, that, that's like an easy way to get it to the audience. Um, it doesn't have favorable deals for the producers at our level. And um, it's not, it's like, it's all, it's getting tougher and tougher to get there. It's like, you know, believe me, if we, if we could just take our little film and just get it on all those platforms, we'd be off and running on with it. But there's a lot of other factors that go into it in terms of um, all the deliverables that go with it, um, the cost of delivery. And, yeah. and you know, in, in this sense, all we needed was our project file. And, and we use Indiegogo as the storefront. Um, we, we use that with YouTube and it's just like, it, it can't be any easier for us. Like that, that there's nothing easier on our end and it's just like, bam, now we're off and running and, and that's what we wanted, you know? So, yeah. No, I think it's brilliant. I mean, I, I, you all have actually given me an idea for a short film that I want to do that I was like, the reason I didn't want to do it is I was like, look, you know, there, we, there's no platform. I can't put this on iTunes. Nobody's going to give a damn about this short film on iTunes and all that kind of stuff. But I went, you know, what he's done is brilliant. And that's where I could put a short film on. And, you know, it's going to cost me maybe four or five hundred dollars to, to do it. And I was like, I might be able to recoup that four or five hundred dollars. Maybe, maybe. And I was like, I like what you've done. And, and look, hey, you've given another filmmaker hope for a project that I literally was like, I'm not going to take my time to do this short because I'm not going to take it to a festival. Gee, I've never understood that. I know people do it and love it, and that's great, and thumbs up to them. I just, uh, <clears throat> I don't have the money to go put it in a film festival and go, I know I'm not going to make any money on this, and I want to spend money one in there, and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, but I went, that's a brilliant idea. Indiegogo, because even if I got... Forty dollars. I'd be like, hey, well, okay, we got forty dollars. We go out and have pizza, and, and and forty people watch the film. You know, it's and it's not just up on YouTube by itself. I think what you're doing is really, really fascinating. I really, really hope it works. I, I really, really, truly do. And and I can say that selfishly because I, I I hope because I go that gives me and it should give other filmmakers an a wow moment of like. Maybe we could do something like that and use it the same way and maybe make some money so that we can pay the electric bill and people are looking at the project and it's creating an audience. And you, we don't have to give 40% of it to Amazon if they'll even look at it. Yeah, it's just crazy. I think it's, I think it's a brilliant idea. Did you go on? I do have a real quick quest. I'll let you all go because you can turn the air conditioner on. Sorry, but, I was dealing with the sick cat, by the way. I'm sorry I kept uh, leaving. Oh, no, that's completely fine we have what four cats I'm hungry. Yeah. so do we they, we have treats every morning um <laughs> is, is there uh did you were did indiegogo like did you have to tell them that this was a fundraising project or like uh, did you just tell them hey we're going to use you as a rental service like how how did you approach them um, you know, we, we approached um, Indiegogo, um, you know, we approached um, Slava, Dene, and Adam Chapnick. Adam Chapnick is the CEO of Distriber, but he's also one of the, he's like the chief person in terms of film on Indiegogo. And um, I was able to get into a conversation with, with you know, I mean, uh, Slava got back to us and said, hey, since this is a film project, why don't you talk to Adam? So, uh, you know, I, I pitched the idea to Adam a little bit on the phone. And um, he, he thought it was a very intriguing and interesting idea. And, um, and, and I asked him, I said, has anyone else tried this on Indiegogo? And, and so the, there's, a whole, there's a whole story there. Uh, but, right. but, but essentially with Indiegogo, um, you can put up any project you want, really. You know, like, you know, yeah, if, yeah, if, you, if you look at it, you know, they, they basically welcome any project. Like any idea you have. That, that you want to you want to put up there, uh, um, okay. you know that that's okay. where you're seeing like the, the the bus monitor sort of that that sort of thing explode. You know, pe people um, putting money up to to send her on a vacation. You're seeing like um, people from from the Colorado shooting and and you know these recent shootings, um, right. the victims of those shootings that people are just putting up projects for the families. Um, right, right, so right. so there doesn't seem to be any restrictions or limitations on that right now. Um, kind of like Kickstarter has. I guess that's what I'm thinking of there. Yeah, yeah. So honestly, 
as as we've been looking at it, we, we just saw sort of like this sort of loophole, you know, you know, yeah. we, just, we just saw like this thing. It's just like it's almost like I, I, I tend to view it like the DSLR cameras, you know, like all of a sudden yeah. we got these cameras that are giving us these amazing visual images and you're able to change lens and do things like that. And it's like, wait a minute, this isn't just a uh, this isn't just a. A photo camera, a picture camera, like this is also, you know, a video camera, and then you know, yeah. being modified and everything like that. And, and and as I was looking at iTunes and I'm looking at Amazon and all this stuff, it's just like all these platforms are just so boring. Like you know, it's just like we've gotten to a place right now where crowdfunding is so exciting. It's just like you know, raising money for the project is more exciting than actually like releasing the film when it's done. And I'm just like, yes. you know, I'm like, I'm like, what's going on here? You know, like, why can't, what do we have to do to get the excitement in the release? Not, not in the funding, but like when the film's actually done and people can see it. And, and right. that's, where, that's where I'm just looking at, at Indiegogo. And I'm just like, you know, it, it, looking at crowdfunding and that sort of thing. Um, so it had all those factors going for it. And, and I didn't just see a crowdfunding platform. What I started to see was a distribution platform. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. I do. I do. I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, look. It was <laughs> nice so talking to you all. I know we are too. I'm like, I'm like, I'm getting ready. I see, I've got my controller right here. The minute you guys stop, I'm gonna be like, kadang. Right. Well, thank you guys. You thank know? you. I, I know we have. This haven't... was really therapeutic for us. Yeah. This was really cool. Yeah. You know, I think some of this will cut out, but uh, I mean, it was just nice to hear from you guys that same thing. Like, you know, is this all worth it? And and you know, just. Yeah. Putting in all this time, and you get this little, who was it we were talking to? The needle moves just a little bit. Just Gregory Bain. Gregory Bain, that was yeah. it. Yeah, the needle and, and, and just, just. Moving that needle a little bit more, you know, just pushing that yeah. needle out a little bit further. Yeah. It's, and we, uh, hopefully, uh, there's one or two film festivals there in L.A. that hopefully we can go to. And even if not, we're going to have a screening there after uh, our premiere. And we'll have to hook up. I mean, yeah. we've got we've got to we've got to get together for dinner. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Fun. No, that, that's all I was gonna say is you know, unfortunately, I mean, you know, as you guys were filming Screen and filming Crawl, um, you know, we really wanted to be there. You know, like it was, it was it was in our hearts. Like, man, it'd be so cool to just hang in there. You know, seeing yeah, seeing see, 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 see these hardworking that, people go to work. What's that? Yeah. Well, we dreamed about having a film bird show here, while, like on set while we were filming. We thought that would be so awesome, but. Again, those are things to where when we have money and time and totally. set something up. Yeah. 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 But so, but this this conversation was great. So I was gonna say that, you know, this, this sort of served that purpose to some degree to kind of, you know, we don't have any yeah. food. We don't have any food in front of us. But this was yeah. like sitting down and, and having dinner with you. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeding well, you that. Well, we guys, and good luck. Oh, thank okay. You. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you yeah. guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. you guys for That's... taking time out. We yeah. enjoyed yeah. your film very much. Oh, cool. We're looking forward to sharing ours with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, we're excited yeah. to see it. We're excited to see it. See y'all later. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs>